Well, hello everybody. It's a beautiful, bright, sunny afternoon. Friday, September the 1st, 2023, here in Kalifi Harbor in Kenya. So, I'm going to show you how I go about constructing a, or an, auxiliary rudder blade necessary to do this because the other one is still I'm out there I'm sure out there floating somewhere in the Indian Ocean a friend that I met here uh, took me to a very good lumber yard in Khalifi town where I purchased this is the uh, this piece here is the off cut it was a plank uh, a couple inches over seven feet long and right about 12 inches wide. My auxiliary rudder is going to be 10 inches wide. And here it is. I'm just getting ready to start all the layout. Beautiful piece of timber. Now my friend saw it and said he thought this wood came from the Congo. What the name of this wood is? What I'm preparing to do here is square off the end and so I could do the layout on this surface for the foil shape. Now the foil will be an NACA 00 20 foil. John Letcher in his self-steering for sailing craft talks a bit about the foil shapes. The information is readily available online and the numbers tell you about the foil. In this case it's uh, symmetrical side to side. It's not asymmetrical like an airplane wing would be to provide lift in one direction. And I've made a couple of templates. Here's one. This is the outside of the foil. It's half. And this piece is the inside of the cutout. And how these things are set up is quite simple. There's a dimension from the front, the leading edge to the trailing edge, which is the length of the cord of the foil. The width or the depth of the foil is a percentage of the length of the cord. In this case it's 20%. So since this is 10 inches long it will be the total thickness will be about 2 inches. The wood I'm making one and three quarter inches and I figure with a couple layers of glass and epoxy and a fairing compound it'll come out to two inches. The other two parts of the foil are that this edge of the foil is not just a straight line from point A to point B. It actually has a shape to it. And if you want to get real technical with the layout you can do stations, lines like this and it'll give you the percentage for each station. I just kind of eyeballed it. The other critical dimension is up here in the leading edge. This radius is 0.6 or 60 percent of the thickness of the cord. So I just laid that out with a compass with a holding a pencil. Described a curve in it. And the other thing is how far from the leading edge aft or back on the foil is the maximum thickness. Now this number can vary but usually for maximum lift, minimum drag on a symmetrical foil that wants to be about 30 percent of the length of the cord. So, so 10 inches 30% is 3 inches. Now often if you're doing an asymmetrical foil 
and I did this back in the days when I built model airplanes, uh, radio control, make the uh, bottom foil 40%. So more of the lift is generated farther forward and on the top and less is generated and it's generated further aft on the bottom. That gives the wing lift in that direction. But we want the lift equal in both directions depending on the angle of attack of the blades. So that's why I use a symmetrical foil. So what I'll do is I'm going to square off the end with my saw and then I'm going to draw a center line this way center this way across and put this guy up to it and then draw on the outside edge with a magic marker that'll leave me a fairly thick line because this part this part from the 30 percent part going to the trailing edge will be where most of the material has to be removed and I'm not going the full length. This is seven feet, which is longer than I need by some number of inches. Not worried about that that's the top end. This is the bottom end, of course. Not worried about that right now. But the actual foil shape only has to be from this end and for the depth that it'll be in the water. In this case, it'll be three feet. And so that can, from somewhere above that, it can tape, go on a curve like that. But this end here will be three feet from the bottom edge, and then it'll curve up a little like that. And once I get it all shaped down, which is a bit of a chore, I've done this before with the previous one, which was plywood, and plywood is kind of a pain in the ass to work with when you're removing a lot because the grain is half of it's one way and half of it's another way. This actually, this auxiliary rudder, even though it's a bit narrower than the other one, should be considerably stronger because most of the strain is not from the rudder being on the boat and having to resist the flow of the water from the front but it has to be strong this way because that's when the start of the boat gets pushed sideways by waves you can imagine uh, something over three feet of a lever arm operating against that bottom gudgeon and pintle setup also against the top but most of it's against the bottom gudgeon and pintle. So I think the stress on this will be less because I'm making the area less and the depth a bit less than the other one. Plus it's all nice pretty vertical grain uh, solid wood. And with two layers of fiberglass on it uh, covered with epoxy it should be quite strong. Anyway, I uh, will bring you back as I progress. Once I square off the end, then I will lay out lines. I'll put the, uh, draw the foil shape on this end and then lay out lines that are parallel to the leading edge. I don't have to worry about too much cutting up here uh, maybe a little bit, but back here, especially as you get towards the trailing edge, I need uh, to remove quite a bit of material, and what I found the easiest thing to do for me is to cut parallel lines at different depths, depending on the thickness, with a circular saw. Maybe uh, the lines will be maybe that far apart. About the thickness of my wood piece here, this straight edge I'll use to draw the lines, but I'll make the lines about that far apart. And then cut to the varying depths with the circular saw. And then the bulk of the material I'll remove with a big chisel and a mallet. 
once I get that done and get it smoothed down pretty well, it's time to go to town with the grinder and a flappy disc. And I got a stack of 10 40 grit discs for uh, shaping this down. So it's not a bad job. I don't mind grinding wood, although it's going to get sawdust everywhere. And uh, when that's all done, and I get the top edges all cleaned up. I might taper the trailing edge, cut it back at an angle towards the top of the piece of wood because I don't really need that full width strength the whole length. I did that uh, tapered cut on the other auxiliary rudder, never gave me any problems. And it helps to reduce the weight of the overall rudder. Now the real trick, of course, is my new uh, gudgeon setup, which I've got in my brain, but I've got to get over to a fabricator and have it made. And of course, I'm going to need a couple pieces of stainless steel rod because I still got to make the trim tab uh, for the auxiliary rudder. So it'll be the same setup. The trim tab turns the auxiliary rudder, which turns the boat. Anyway. That's a brief introduction to what I'm doing. I'll shoot videos as I go along. Bye for now.